I couldn't sleep. I tossed and I turned. I put in my iPod, I took it out. I closed my eyes, but I couldn't sleep. The night after our senior class visited the Majdanek death camp in Poland, I lay in my bed and reflected on my experiences from the previous few days. We had borne witness to the remnants of the horrors inflicted upon the innocent Jewish victims in Europe. Thousands of pairs of shoes and glasses, piles and piles of real human hair, suitcases that still had names and labels on them, directing them to a destination that would never be reached, all collected by the Nazis at Auschwitz-Birkenau. A lush, green forest outside of Lublin, where 800 children had been marched, forced to dig a mass grave, and then murdered. And Majdanek, a death camp so intact that it is said to be capable of full functionality in just 24 hours. It was all truly horrifying. But the thing that really affected me most something wasn't something that I saw in Poland. It was something that I heard. Towards the end of our time there, we were talking about Adolf Eichmann, the SS lieutenant colonel responsible for the deportation of Jews for the final solution. Before he died, Eichmann said something to the effect of, I can die in peace knowing that I've done my job. The Jews may not know it yet, but they're finished. They're like a chicken running around with a tight cut off that doesn't know it's dead yet. We were done. We were dead. But after having attended the San Diego Jewish Academy for the past 13 years, and having just spent the past five weeks in Poland and Israel with my classmates, I'm here to tell you that Eichmann was wrong. In fact, we are very much alive. The class of 2011 is a living, breathing embodiment of the strength of the Jewish people today, each connecting in their own way. One of the highlights of Israel was obviously the food. The vegetables are fresh, the shawarma is tasty, and the soda comes in a cool glass bottle. For me, Israeli food has always just been another thing to look forward to when I go there. But I've never seen someone become so connected and so enthusiastic about Judaism in Israel, or really anything else for that matter, just from eating food, as I did with David Remy. <laughs> Remy told me before the trip that he didn't have much of a connection to Israel other than what we had learned in school. However, after that first taste of shawarma and Makhina Yehuda on our first day there, it was love at first sight. Everywhere we went, Remy gulped down every bit of Israeli food he could get his hands on, of course making sure that there were no nuts inside, because he's allergic. <laughs> but the best part about Remy's love affair with Israeli cuisine was that it went much deeper than just the food. It served as the catalyst for a love affair with everything Israeli and Jewish. Literally everywhere we went, Remy would drop a, this is so cool, or, dude, I love being here. <laughs> On a hike near the remains of one, of one of King Solomon's ancient cities, he told me how unreal it felt to be walking in the same land that our ancestors had 2,000 years ago. It was awesome to watch Rainey's transformation from completely neutral to completely engaged over the duration of our trip. My classmates and I also experienced a religious connection on top of Masada, the site of the last free sovereign Jewish settlement since Roman times until the founding of the State of Israel. Just before sunrise, we finished our hike up the steep snake path to the top. A small group of us went into one of the excavated rooms, put an arm to fill in, and did the morning shock grave as the sun rose over the desert before us. I felt a strong sense of community from praying with the same group that I had been since sixth grade, blown away by the beautiful landscape around me, and proud to be part of a group of free Jews standing in the very same spot where our ancestors were forced to give up their lives to remain free rather than becoming enslaved by the Romans. When we finished, we all just stood there for a moment, taking it all in. Knowingly or not, we had all just upheld the Israeli Defense Forces oath that all soldiers take. Shehid Masada la Dipo. Masada will not fall again. Singing also served as a personal expression for Judaism. After Shabbat dinner on Friday nights in Israel, a group of us would gather around the table singing Zmiro. We didn't have any books, and many in our group didn't actually know the words of the songs, but that didn't take away from our enthusiasm and our passion. Sheer and Miriam Fink led the songs, Brad and I drummed on the table, Kevin's voice boomed, and Tully and Dory added some notes that were actually on key. 
It was really special for me to sit around the table with my friends, coming from all different expressions of Jewish practice and belief, and connecting with Shabbat and each other as we did. It gave me a lot of hope about Jews from all different walks of life being able to come together as one unified people. Adolf Eichmann thought that we were done. To him, we were destroyed, a people on the decline that would eventually die out like every other people in history. But Eichmann was not counting on us fighting back. Eichmann wasn't counting on the state of Israel. Eichmann wasn't counting on places like the San Diego Jewish Academy. He wasn't counting on a graduating class made up of students involved in the Ken Jewish community, Temple Youth Groups, APAC, the ADL, USY, NCSY, BBYO, Jewish summer camps, the Akiva, Future Leaders for Israel, American Jewish World Service, the JFS and Sarah Project, Mu Beit Din, Gap Years in Israel, and Service in the Israeli Army. Eichmann wasn't counting on the class of 2011. So Adolf Eichmann, we have something to say to you. We, the class of 2011, are standing here, 47 strong, to tell you that you were wrong. We are solidly grounded in our Judaism and our love for Israel. We will not die out. We are not dead. We are here to stay. Class of 2011, I wish you the best in the years to come. It's truly been a privilege seeing you guys every single day for the past 13 years. I'm proud to say that it was as soon as I thought of you guys that I was able to fall soundly asleep that night in Cohen. Because I know with people like you in the world, we, as the Jewish people, will continue to rebuild what was lost. We'll continue to grow and excel and flourish. We'll continue to act with love and kindness and to pursue peace. We will continue to prove I've been wrong. We will continue to change the world each and every day. Thank you.